Good afternoon again. Uh, this afternoon we're on the second part of Unit 1 of the IQA Award. As we left off um, on Tuesday, I was partway through the um, IQA presentation. I will continue that in a few moments um, and also look at the assignment brief that I originally wrote for that, which I wanted to bring up. I've also put in this time an um, internal verification strategy so you can see what one should look like, what it will contain, and the type of things that the IQA is then responsible for. So the IQA presentation that I delivered initially, which is this one thing. Going on from 3.1, where we're up to, where we were up to, um, we now have sampling plans, assessment, qualification, assess qualification and experience, control units, observation, and the use of audio visual technology. A lot of the time, um, a plan has got to be made that when you're going to sample the units. As I mentioned at the back end of last the last session, um, sampling plans should be made roughly for every three months for students that are registered on a particular qualification. Not all units of every student need to be sampled, just a percentage of them um, that goes that covers the, the whole unit across the whole of the units across the qualification, but um, it may be two or three units from each student, but different ones. Having said that, there will be, or usually it is better to, or good practice, to have a control unit. So that, um, to give you an example, on the level five teaching and learning program that some of you are um, on, um, the unit one is probably the biggest unit in the qualification. Uh, it's got about eight. Uh, and uh, learning uh, objectives in it, and it has a lot of elements within those. Some of those overlap into the other units, as I've said before, but if you use unit one as a, as a sample to see that the assessors on that particular unit are assessing the same way and to, to the same standard during any um, sample, uh, sorry, fun, any um, standardization meetings, that can be words if, if everybody is assessing the same way and to the same it's it more than likely it's going to cross units observation um, yeah that's not observation of the assessor on the candidate that is the observer of the IQ on the assessor periodically uh, and this is in the sampling plan which I'm going to cover uh, in a minute uh, sorry the um, strategy that I'm going to cover in a minute. Um, if you've got a new assessor um, who's not done any assessment before, he will probably need or she will need more support in that first period. So where you're probably doing an observation with um, a, qualified, sorry, a qualified and an experienced assessor probably once a year, um, you may need to do an observation probably two or three times a year um, with a new assessor until they gain the confidence with your support to be able to say, yeah, I'm okay now, I'm not I'm all I'm doing, I understand the system properly and I you know I feel confident. The use of audio visual technology, um, yeah. Um, it's becoming more and more used now. Uh, we of course we've got the electronic portfolio now that where you don't really need to put a paper based one together at all. Um, if you're doing um, a professional discussion as part of the assessment process, of course, that can be done either as a video or an audio um, to meet the standards that's required. Appeals procedures, assessor communication, standards, learning objectives, education. 
Um, every system has an appeals procedure. If a, if a student, for instance, is not happy with an assessment that has been made, he first takes that up with the assessor himself. If they cannot agree at that point, um, the candidate or the learner can take it to the IQ, IQA, who will then adjudicate between the assessor and the student and will either come up you know, with the, on the side of the um, assessor or on the, on the, uh, the learner, in which case um, the assessor will take advice. If the IQA is satisfied the assessor was right, then the learner can in fact take it back to, right back to the awarding body if he wishes to. Um, it's never happened, I've never known it go that far, but that's the procedure. It works backwards towards the awarding body. Communications with the assessor, um, how that would, how would you would take that forward with, um, if you disagreed with the assessor, then you would have to take that forward with the assessor uh, and without the um, learner being there, obviously. Standards. Yeah, who, you get often qualifications of different levels to assess. So you'll be assessing, say, a level five, and then you may be assessing a level seven or a level six. Or level three. You need to assess at that level. So you take advice from the awarding body uh, on what they have put down to be acceptable at a specific level. And it either meets it or it doesn't, quite honestly. Um, it's getting more muddied now with this this past merit and distinction, um, which I was before I to agree with, um, because it then muddies the water as to it's what 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 standard is it a pass does it reach the standard for a merit or does it reach the standard for distinction hmm. it's a moot point the unit standards themselves are the criteria that you work to the documentary evidence is what you put together either electronically or, or in hard copy it absolutely looks at the scope of the evidence. Quite a lot of qualifications will put in um, the type of thing that should be in, um, that, it, that you should be discussing within in the work that you're producing. I've put in a lot of these, of course, is suggested evidence. Scope of evidence, the width or breadth or depth, whichever way you want to term it, of the, the evidence, the amount of evidence that you've got, whether it's sufficient. Is it valid? Do we know it's from the student? Uh, and is it authentic? Has the student done it himself? Assessor support. Usually, when assessors start to become assessors, a, a training needs analysis or TNA will be done by the IQA in conjunction with the manager of the section and determine what specific training or further training assessors may need. That can be given um, verbally or it can be given as a written and kept and signed off when you've completed a certain part of the training. IQA reports. Um, this is um, the IQA report back to the assessor. It's usually a formality. If everything's gone to plan, the work is done, it's achieved the standard, and the feedback that to the student it reflects all that, then the IQA report will just say that and no further action to be taken. If there are deficiencies or the IQA thinks there are deficiencies in the, the, uh, the work. Or, in fact, if it's a, an, an early um, formative ass assessment, the IQA may make some comments in his feedback to the assessor on his report uh, to watch something, be, be aware of this or be aware of that. Again, interpreting standards. Most of the standards have interpretation with 
if you're unsure about it, but again, uh, it's the IQA's job to liaise with the awarding body to make sure that the interpretation is correct and that feed that back to the assessor. Standardisation. This comes back to an IQA strategy statement, standardisation meetings which I've discussed before, and agreeing assessment methods and requirements. This is again, once the last, uh, last slide actually has been discussed with the awarding body, if there are any issues, then we agree a method at the standardisation meeting and the evidence required. At what level? Because that what I would normally do with um, some assessors is give them a student or a copy of a student's work and let them do an assessment on it and see the differences in opinion for the assessor on that particular piece of work um, and then adjudicate between them. To be fair, on some um, meetings that I've had, they've been very close together and we don't have much disagreement, but they've been with experienced assessors. What tends to happen is new assessors go either one way or the other. They will either be too lenient or they'll be too strict. I find that if I am assessing a qualification for the first time and I've not used that before, I will pretty well stick to the letter of the law. Um, that way, it would appear harsh, but at the end of the day, you've got to fit the learning objective. If it's not, not achieving the learning objective, then it doesn't pass. That's why I'm so clear about pass and, and not yet achieve, not fail, not yet achieve. It may be just additional work. Needed. Dispute meetings, records, external quality assurance, embodied. we've mentioned it already. It's basically the procedure you go through uh, if you've got a dispute. And again, it's really happened. It's not something that happens every, every year, never mind anything else. Reviewing your own practice is questions assessors are, are, uh, are questions about yourself, how you interpret the standards, and referring back to the awarding body or issue of the awarding body when there are issues that can't be resolved. Another IQA function is, of course, um, data collection. Oh, I'm sorry, this is before. I'm going back to uh, the beginning of Unit 1. So I'll close that down for now and I'll open up one of the others. I said. Yeah, this was the course assignment brief that I sent you all. I don't know if you all read through it or not, but basically um, it says about what about this unit? Uh, it's a mixture of knowledge and practice that will be used to gather the evidence you need to complete it. Follow the routes of suggested evidence available to on the movement platform, and I'll bring those up again in a minute anyway. Uh, this gives you a specific guide to what's required. There's also ample reading material available on there covering the knowledge base questions. Some of the unit, some of the unit two, or this unit, choose two of your assessors, sorry, I've got my tongue twisted. This unit, choose two of your assessors uh, and provide of the documentary evidence that you use within the school or the college within which you work in. It will provide you with some explanation, the bulk of your evidence for this unit. There is specific guidance, element by element, as to what is required on the Moodle platform. Any further knowledge based questions are covered in the reader material at your disposal. Unit 2 is very much a practically based unit, and that is asking you to show where got together this evidence for Unit 1, it will then fit in into Unit 2. Uh, it should be covered by um, copies of your school or college's policies on the subject with some explanation. Copies of standardisation meetings will be good evidence in this section. If you have a separate 
turning these analysis, sample plans, etc. These will also be useful evidence. Again, using complete copies of your documentation, skilled documentation. Further knowledge and based information can be accessed to PowerPoint presentations on this subject available on the Moodle platform. Any further questions, email in the usual way. But please note, copies means actual completed documents, not blank copies used as examples, because no. This is an internal verification strategy that produced by a college in West Lancs some time ago. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, the, the material that's in it is applicable to just about everything. It was a standard uh, strategy that I put forward. And it looks at a whole range of the things that we have um, looked at the last um, two or three days on the presentations. And it's a strategy of managing and sampling, assess the wards, and it will be determined by size to ensure reliability, the number of experience and workload of the assessor, the number of different sites worked, rolling start finish dates, and will be by examination, assessment records, and feedback. Observations. For an experienced assessor, well, I've put two per year on there because they, they, all the assessors were not very um, experienced. Even though experienced ones didn't have a lot of experience, but I kept it at um, two per year. It could be one for experienced assessors who've been doing it good while. Spelled that wrong, so I'm going to correct it. No, correct. For all new assessors, three in the first six months, and two in the second six months, and three in the following 12 months. Those are the laid down in the strategy how the IQA needs to observe and keep an eye on, really, the assessors under his wing, if you like. As a minimum, um, one interim and one final internal verification on each one. One control unit core samples for all candidates to ensure standardization. All records are kept in Centre 5. The Centre 5 will be produced and contain a list of assessors, their qualifications and experience in any CPD. A list of registered candidates identifying the dates of registration. An overall sampling plan over a given period covering all the registered candidates. An ongoing sampling plan for formative verification of portfolios. An ongoing sampling plan for summative verification of portfolios and submitted assignments. Copies of interim internal verification reports to assessors with any actions and feedback. Couple copies of final internal verification reports to assess the speed with any feedback and or action. Any actions to be cleared and recorded before external authorised visit. That's a must. I know it's obvious, but quite often it gets forgotten that any actions need to be outstanding actions need to be closed out before you present them to the external verifier, he or she will pick that up straight away. All records of any claim specification to be kept on file. We will work towards a standard portfolio for these awards, determining what they will contain and in what order they will appear. This was mainly for initially for paper based portfolios, but that applies to electronic ones as well. You would have to present or put together a folder with say unit one and then unit two 
unit three, unit four, uh, et cetera, on whatever then you were using afterwards. If you would do the, the core units first and then whatever children units fit in afterwards. All new assessors to receive adequate induction in all processes, followed by club support. Again, there's a little word adequate in there. What is adequate? Adequate means when the assessor or new assessor feels confident enough to be able to say, right, well, I'm, I'm okay now. All assessors have copies of all centre assessment materials. I put TBA in there because at the time I did this, they weren't available. Copies of internal verification documents, copies of standards for each award they assess, access to training and support. To give some background to that TBA, uh, this was a college, quite a well-known college, I have not mentioned it, in West Lanks, who had had a meeting with the external verifier from the awarding body, who had put a sanction on them um, to stop them um, claiming certification unless it had gone through the normal channels because the internal verification week uh, poor and not were able to set up and some of the assessors were they, uh, they didn't have the confidence to be able to do what they were supposed to do. Um, I was asked to go, there was no strategy there. He, uh, fortunately for the, um, the college, the external verifier known to me and you know um, he knew me as well and he said if I would provide him this copy of a strategy over the weekend he would not put any further sanction on the organisation and they would be able to register and register the from students. Um, so that was fun. This is how important the strategy is from an awarding body's point of view. They want to see the machinery there within the organisation to be able to adequately cover uh, the standards of the qualification, but also to put, uphold the standards of the qualification, if you understand. All portfolios presented for internal verification shall have secure storage, be logged in and out and cleared within three weeks. That is the paper-based ones. Um, the, there has to be some sort of time limit and some sort of control over where the material is and who got access to it. So this strategy has three strands. Sample assessment, monitor assessment practice, standardised assessment judgment. When new assessors join the team, propose standardised on a board schedule. This is a document amended from time to time to comply with recommendations from external verifier or quality Numbered amended copies will be put in force and previous versions destroyed. That is typical audit um, wordage, really. It's making sure that the this document is updated what it needs to be, and this document will be destroyed in terms of the new one when that occurs. That there is no crossover, no mistakes to be made. Some of you know I used to be a mechanical engineer, and the thing that could occur is that you would issue uh, an amendment to a drawing that somebody was going to make something from, and then the copy hadn't been destroyed. Uh, somebody ended up working to the old copy, and the new amendment's not been added, and the repercussions are obvious. The same thing applies to documentation. Yeah, it needs to be audible, and it needs to be honest, and it needs to be clear. So we all know what a strategy is now. Yeah. Um, this will be available on the platform.
I'm not sure why it was this time to come involved uh, and some, some not open when it should be. I mean, I'm just going to look at um, the last bit from the time. Evaluate different techniques, Western, including the use of technology. Um, I haven't actually got different techniques in the, in the knowledge base, um, but this is looking at of assessing, uh, sorry, verifying a number of assessments. If you've got a small number of students on qualification, you can you can basically in turn to verify all the units right across the board 100 percent and that is what i would normally suggest doing when you've only got up to say up to 10 students or learners on a particular qualification if you've got more than that and some of the larger colleges you may have 40 50 60 students on a particular level of qualification you couldn't possibly uh, get through all those in the time. Um, the assessors working unit by unit, element by element, and pulling the evidence together, uh, and he's signing it off as it completes. So that's part of his day to day job. The EQ, uh, sorry, the IQA usually has that as a second job. Um, he will have a full time job, he may be you know, I'll do another operations within the organization, but IQA will be another part of it so that he has limited time and resources in which to carry that operation. That's when percentages start to matter because you need to assess, you need to verify um, a number of assessments over a number of assessors that may be with those 40 to 60 students, there may be five or six assessors. So you need to look at probably um, two or three students across the board on each of those assessors. Um, and But look at, say we're doing, I don't know, seven, six, seven, eight units, you would probably look at uh, a couple of units for each student, along with the control unit. Yeah. Explain the appropriate criteria for using the judgment to judge the quality of the assessment process. The only criteria are standardization and the actual elements of the unit itself. If you work to the um, the monitor, if you monitor them on the basis of the criteria in the qualification, is it achieving that, that, that criteria or isn't it? Don't try to measure it in terms of, and again, this is why I don't like the, the grading. Uh, it would have achieved what's being asked for. Um, so that's what we've covered in the slides on there, so that's why I'm just putting on that bit on there. Again, summarise the types of feedback and support and advice that assessors may need to maintain and improve the quality of the assessment. If you can refer to the slides I've put in there, because we have discussed this on there, um, and it's looking at um, what you do or how you actually report back to the assessor. It will come in the form mainly of your um, IQA report back to the one or particular piece that you've um, verified on your, um, on your plan. If there's something you don't agree with, um, then you put that in the report. Uh, the assessor, I mean, on occasions, I have an assessor come back to me and say, what are you talking about? I've actually covered that here, where I've actually missed it. <laughs> You've got a lot of work to do. Like I say, it's only part of you. 
So consequently, you've got to get a move on to get things done. And sometimes you do miss things. So um, when you go back to the assessor and he comes back to you with something like that, you say, OK, yeah, sorry, I agree. I've missed that. And then I will amend the report. Again, it's coming back to records. If there's been a discussion on a particular item that's been down as an action point, if the action point is removed, then you as IQA have to remove that action point from the record so that you're now accepting what was delivered rather than still having it outstanding. Yeah. Come back to what I was saying about example again with new drawings engineering. Yeah, you must amend the record. Again, standardization requirements, we've covered that quite a bit in there, uh, the slides in there, and again, it's looking at um, what you put in the standardization meeting. Like I've said about control units, about um, different um, approaches to um, from different people at different levels, so, so we all assess at the same level. Again, looking at the um, requirements of information management, data protection. Um, we've looked at keeping records, who should see those records. I think you say on one slide there, it said it must be on the strategy, sorry, uh, it must be kept locked and only available to certain people, and it must be in and out in a certain period. But you look at evaluate your school's um, data protection policy. And the procedures in relation to IQA. So, you sh the school should have a policy on that, and you need to look at that and evaluate that policy. Well, you know, I've had um, trainee IQAs do this with their school and come up with finding that their policy is rather wanting and it needs um, updating. Uh, so, that's quite a useful exercise. That. That's on it. Evaluate the list of issues, policies, and procedures relevant to IQA or assessment, including those of health, safety, and welfare. You can make a continuation of, of your evaluation at 5.1. 5.1 and 6. I would suggest that you run them together because they are um, looking at initially your school and then the wider issues around it as well. Evaluate different ways in which technology can contribute to the IQA of assessment. I'm in my 70s now. I'm not, tech, I'm not a technophobe, but I'm not technical either. I use technology. There are a number of ways which other people can probably tell me uh, how you could use, I don't know, your mobile phone, and other so how many more things you can do. Uh, to, to, to keep control of a, uh, on records of the situation. Um, but basically, it's looking at um, keeping electronic records, I think, from the, So there's additional slides in the PowerPoint or the earlier PowerPoint for that to have a look at. Again, this refers to the slides, but the, the other bit is, is looking at reflective practice and continuing professional development. It's looking at, um, as an IQA, how much involvement do you get in the different areas? You're involved with, obviously, with assessors. Uh, you're involved with candidates as well, because usually when you don't observe an assessor with a particular candidate, what you would do is, um, you would, with that candidate, you would um, do a full interview with him. Uh, in fact, uh, I had some interviews. Interview sheet for IQAs like standardised questions to candidates to make sure they were happy with the process of what was going on. Explain the value of reflective practice in continuing professional development in relation to IQA. So, literally, the models of reflection look at. Look at for the, the teaching course, the same thing apply here. Um, how you can improve what you do and the way you actually do it. 
again, the equality the requirements for equality and diversity and welfare are and were appropriate bilingualism in relation to IQ assessment. This applies sometimes if you've got students whose English is almost a barrier to the qualification. Language can be a barrier, uh, but in some cases it can be, make things extremely difficult. Um, I've assessed work at high levels that I've turned down because, quite honestly, I couldn't understand what they were actually trying to say. In sections, you can understand what they've said and you understand the meaning behind it, even if it's not entirely correct. But a lot of the time, I couldn't understand it at all. I had to reject it because of that. Uh, and again, who enroll them onto that level without checking that they've got sufficient um, language skills to be able to uh, call with the work? So it's again, um, that's ideas for your evaluation. And again, from reflection, you can analyze ways to improve um, in practice in planning, delivering, assessing, inclusive teaching, and learning. Yeah. There's some work in there on the additional slides uh, on the PowerPoint. So if you can look through those. At the end, I've just added on why does it say all oh, there? It should say all. Oh. I'll correct that while I'm here. Today. All that comes in this must be assessed using different methods of assessment of knowledge and understanding. The evidence can be presented in the form of a portfolio, which can include assessor observations, witness testimonies, worksheets, assignments, reports, professional discussions, and peer reports, and the RPL. Yeah, it's just the guidance. The aim of this unit is to assess the knowledge and understanding of the principles and practice that underpin internal quality issues of assessment. And that is it. I will close the meeting today and we will start to look at IQA Unit 2, as we on this one, or Unit 2 this week, uh, next week. Thank you all for listening. Don't forget this is available on Moodle. Um, you'll be able to, obviously, not know the route Nobody was able to attend today, um, but you were able to listen to my drumming voice and at any time you wish by accessing it from the Moodle platform. Again, thanks for listening and we'll speak again next time.